Shalom. This is um, Ras Alonso Teferi. Wyndham Alonso Tafari reporting for the Line of Judah Society. Today's date is Thursday, July 21st, 2016. It's 10.22 a.m. Uh, and I seek to bring forth this study, um, the which we can title War in Heaven. Now, I don't even think that that's an appropriate title, but it sounds pretty cool. So, War in Heaven. We're going to focus on the book of Exodus, chapter 17, um, from verse 8 onwards. So, you know, um, let us begin. So, we're going to go first to um, Proverbs, chapter 25. Verse, let's see, Proverbs, chapter 25. Verse 5, take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. So there's a throne. On earth as it is in heaven, but there's a missing link, a connection that needs to be established the same connection the which I and I personally have no power over, but power is given to whom hath received. And if that is so, then the throne, as is in heaven, is on earth. But something must be done first. The wicked must be taken away. Who is the wicked? I am the wicked. I am Hashetan. I, Raz Alonso Teferi, first and foremost, before any accusations, I am Hashitan. I am the principal adversary of the will of the Most High, which is the will to live a, a spiritual life. I am the opponent. I oppose I, not creator, and knowing this allows us to take one step forward to true growth so the wicked must be removed that scripture has been fulfilled I testify to the fact that I am wrong my interpretation of his commandment of his word is not acceptable. We have all fallen short. We have not interpreted his word accordingly. Knowing this, then I, I can commence from the beginning, knowing that I am the problem. But knowing that I am the problem, then I have been carefully removed, set aside, Thus Christ be in us, and all things shall be created. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created. I don't even remember what it says in English. I mean, um, in the beginning, God created. The heaven and the earth. Let's see. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. Let's see, let's see. Give us just one second. Berashit. We're trying to open this up. Berashit. Elohim, bara, um, something to that effect. Eight Shemaim, eight Eretz. Shemaim, Ishmaim, fire, water, Elohim, spirit, light. You know, to be a little bit more precise, a seventh spirit. That's to say, 
a perfected spirit, a refined spirit. The first power of the Trinity is the spirit that I um, need in order to activate man's responsibility according to his call. If I know is to be a chosen called man. So, not to get confused, the first power of the Trinity is man's reconciliation, man's state before man fell. That is open to, to the things unseen, connected um, uh, above and below, being the center connection, being the trans, uh, I guess like the 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 heart of the matter, the um the link that connects heaven to earth, this which has been created in the beginning, the Rashid, Shemaim, heavens, Ish Maim, so water is created, fire is created, Elohim has created, Elohim is spirit, air, light. So we have air or wind, we have fire and water. And thus is the word sound that come from eye and eye mouth, saliva, water, body temperature, heat. The trumpet blows air. Eight erets. This same he created as I am creating while acting as creator, creating continuously, a reflection of self, a recognition of self that cannot deny itself, the reason for existence, to uphold or to be upheld by his word that sustains all, three, all things, and as long as a true and faithful witness testimony, which is Martis, which is martyrdom, a death to self, and a an acceptance of the sacrificial life, which is the spiritual life, is then a tree of life, a tree which bears good fruit, not of our own, but through him in whom we can do all things, whom without we can do not one thing, Jesus Christos. You know, in light of his majesty. So we have this continual rep repetition of, of, um, of creation. Reaffirming itself. Reminding creation itself that it is worth sustaining. Because there is within the inhabited creation recognition of self. Otherwise, life has no purpose. So let us continue. As I speak, I create, because the word that I speak is true and faithful. Not that I am true and faithful, not that my behavior is true and faithful, but I know one thing, I know that he is true and faithful. And because I know him that is, then I am and ever will be, for we are one. Now, in the beginning, fire, wind, water, I am earth, and so we have a cross, we have a fullness. We have a beginning from which distances can be covered, from which time can then pierce space. I am space, creation, feminine in its beginning. So I am feminine, male and female created he, me, for I and I is. Now, where are we trying to go with this piercing, the piercing? Um, you see, these things can't be uttered unless... Um, endowed from above and because from above we come then on earth we clarify the things that otherwise would be left unknown so we become that connection and we bring forth that will which is true and faithful in heaven that it be spoken and be judged accordingly on earth true and faithful is an eyewitness so I and I, in the beginning, a piercing must come to pass, a piercing from above, which 
injects upon I and I the memory of himself. Zakat. In this form, I and I become that woman having to lay down our life, spill the blood of virginity for a good cause. Lay down as a woman, receive ye the Holy Spirit, receive ye his word, and be raised a man, a man chosen to serve. Not chosen to be above others, but one chosen that being above others, he may serve being least amongst others. You know, one important um, uh, tool that we can utilize in, in all of our studies is split and flip. This is a good work. What are we eating? We're eating Jah word. How can we, how can we eat lest it be clean? And how shall it be clean lest it split the hoof, divide the walk? and then chew the cud and flip the script. In this we know that the work is clean and pure and we need two witnesses. Two or three witnesses affirms truth. So just keep this in mind. Now where were we? So we receive from above as female then we can act, act as man because then we would have accepted that there is a possibility in the beginning of a miraculous conception. That there is the possibility that something outside of natural um, deceptions is possible and that I too, as Mariam, can bring forth something spiritual, a child. And thus I am born of I and I self and raised in maturity, thence um, affirmed a man, able to take response or able to respond accordingly, knowing that being from above makes me from below, separating myself from Hashetan, which is my flesh self. And this is what I was born to do. I was born to die, that by dying, I would begin to live. So we have a piercing in the beginning, and we have a beginning. The words that I speak give light and create the words that otherwise are not created until they are created. And this day, if one receives his word and mixes it with faith, then this day all things could be created to each and every eye as individuals. For his word is true from beginning to end, the end revealed from the beginning so that we would endure sustaining or sustaining that faith that we've received from the beginning, knowing the hardships that are to come, that we may last to the very end, which is no end at all. But as far as his word, all is fulfilled. Individual responsibilities to accept that is up for grabs. But then again, how could they be grabbed lest someone um, reach out and hand to each one? So, you know, I can only go as far as speaking the word which I've received. It's the mercy and grace of the Most High that show it mercy and compassion upon whom he show compassion and give it the mercy. You know, um, all glory be to him. So now, let's see. Where are we trying to... Okay, war in heaven. There's a distortion. There is a, a um, like we said in the beginning, a missing link. There is no, no, not necessarily knowledge. There is no comprehension, overstanding concerning the heavenly things. Because man has fallen and thus cannot receive the things unseen. And live a life in which he... Uh, you know, uh, a life in which he is limited to the perceptions with which are in, in turn deceptive. And thus, you know, we live the lifestyles that we have been brought up to live. But then, 
you know, if ones were born red, then surely it would be a red heifer. And thus, I now would have realized that all is for this, to die. Everything we've lived is to accept, to receive. And take full responsibility of that which we have received. Not looking to the left, not looking to the right, but accepting one's burden as one's cause to lead to this very moment in which we would over us. And then we could bring, having received in heaven, that same will and declare it on earth. To rule is my right by birth but I must be reborn so I must be as the red heifer is female I must conceive a spiritual thing give light to a child not born of the flesh but of the spirit marked and sealed to die the death well actually the rebirth is actually um um uh after the death you know but we die daily carrying our cross this is what we must do this is what we must accept this is the privilege that we have been adorned with so now because we would have understood overstood that we are fit to carry the burden the which we have been endowed with accept it then we must too by fire be annihilated to remove the wicked thus the throne already established in righteousness but first we must remove the self by fire so that we may go to dust from which we came and we must be um, cleansed with water so but it's let's see the water how could we explain that let's see let's see the water the water soul fire spirit we must drown with waters to the extent that there is no other alternative but for the soul to seek a spirit that it may rise above the occasion inherit air and thus breathe the breath of life otherwise it would be saturated inundated you know as in the beginning to an abyss of unstable mixed up moods and attitudes we could even say so we must die in soul we must die in spirit as the red heifer if this is granted us <clears throat> if this is granted us then no doubt we would have learned the hukat torah i'm gonna add to this hayim Chukat is an interesting word in that it's an ordinance. It's not just a law. Torah is the instruction. Chukat is an ordinance, an instruction. Hayim, a living instruction, the which wisdom is not separated or wisdom is the source that illuminates to otherwise any statute law or decree a law is a law but to comprehend the heavenly will as to how to abide in that law chukat is necessary one needs to suffer and die the humiliating death to rid the self of the self which is the adversary which is Hashetan, which is the problem. I am the problem. So we will be made dust. We will be drowned. We will be infected with 
as much pain, suffering, and plague as necessary to cause a change in attitude in our hearts that we may turn and realize we cannot continue in such a way. We must be pounded, hammered, hacked, hukat. This is the ordinance that he will instruct us. And through the teaching, which is the life itself, which bears upon us the cross that we must carry, which is the burden of life, the, the which we must accept. And only when we accept that we are unacceptable and we make a separation from that which is unacceptable and turn, perhaps maybe we find grace in the Almighty that he illuminate us with that which is in fullness acceptable. And how could it be unless you be of that seed which has been chosen before anything even ever was created. So once again, there's nothing I can do for anyone on a personal level. There's nothing that ones can do for themselves. Ja will be done as is and ever will be. So when we are in a position where we are read like the Adom um, heifer, how do you say heifer? I forgot. Um, uh, well, I forgot at this moment. But when we, when our blood tries to leave ourself, when we are embarrassed to the point that we cannot stand the self, when we become red in whether it be anger, whether it be humiliation, whether it be embarrassment, but when it is suffice to the point where pride looks at you or at me and says this is where I draw the line I'm taking off because pride is too prideful to bear the cross that you are bearing only then would then we be able to receive the beginning after the after the end the end of a selfish life and the turn to the spiritual matter. You know, the teshu, teshuva, teshuva, many think it's just like a repentance, a change in attitude even. No, it's a restoration of the heavenly things that otherwise are unexplainable. Less one is endowed with the explanation which comes in the form of the wisdom in in giving answers to questions that perhaps have never been asked, being the connection and receiving from on high the way to go about in righteousness concerning the matter at hand, which otherwise we cannot find outlined in Torah, in the law of Moses, or any law, because a law must, must be accompanied with a living oral explanation, chukat. The witness from on high that the ordinance is exactly the will that is in heaven. Thus, the instruction can be made living on earth, but one must first live it. So this is just an introduction to the beginning. You know, just kind of brainstorming with um, different, different um, uh, truth that... You know, we've received. It doesn't make anyone any smarter, any brighter. You know, once out to study, to receive, and Ja, he provide. So now, whence are we to go? Perhaps, let's see, we have some notes here to kind of guide us, which we fail to follow each and every time. Now, let's begin with, um, I guess... The book of Exodus, chapter 17. War in heaven. I don't even think I made the point straight. There must be clarity concerning the heavenly matters so that one can be affirmed on earth. Because in the beginning, there's no separation. It is just a, a observation. Elohim created the heavens, and you're on earth. Okay. So no need to fantasize and just maintain a, a, a fine line, well-defined line that distinguishes 
fantasy from reality. This is a beginning, and the, then receive his word. All other things come miraculously. So we go forward on to Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Redemption experienced the conflict with Amalek. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Rephidim, if I'm not mistaken, it's like a hole, the bottom, you know? One's got to hit rock bottom. And even then, some decide not to restore the heavenly matters. So Amalek. Hmm. Let's um, just kind of give a, a brief... Um, let's let's um, just uh, make mention what the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary has to say concerning Amalek. Amalek, warlike dweller in the veil. In the flesh, blind, in other words, valley dweller that licks up, son of Eliphaz by his concubine, Timnah, and grandson of Esau. Let's see, metaphysical. Esau represents the body consciousness. I am Esau. No need to think that, that the Bible is, is even... Uh, insinuating that it has anything to do with anyone other but than I self. So I am Esau. Esau is just a red heifer. Esau was born to die. Esau was red and heavy. So that animal nature must be sacrificed and die the death so that Jacob can overcome. So no need to play the blame game. See, that's the problem. The problem is that we blame everything and everyone and I've done the same all my life it was when I decided to realize or John allowed me to realize that oh it's me I'm the problem to everything everything that I am have been ever wanted to be everything I've ever done my decisions my actions everything that comes from I is destructive so I learned one thing as for I I'm done i rather just sit still and not even do a single thing because everything that I do only harms those around me, including myself. Then ones can begin to live. From him, the Amalekites were descended from I, Amalek, warlike dweller in the veil that licks up or consumes, signifies lust. That base desire, which, when established in the animal forces of the subconscious mind of man, is the begetter of destructive, rebellious, perverted appetites and passions. Amalek's father was Eliphaz, meaning God is strength, God is fine gold. Thus desire, at its origin, is good and is of God. But when it is misinterpreted by the carnal man, it becomes lust. Alright. So, in 1963, His Majesty, Haile Selassie I, elevated man above the animals by speaking or, or speaking the breath of life to the very words that God has already um, pre-recorded to be spoken by Him that and through all things are made manifest in whom all things are, always have been, ever will be. So, man has been raised above the animal and endowed with reason and intelligence. I'll add to that, to reason intelligently the ways to overcome simple dispute without having to resort to violence. But man, through the word sound of his majesty, is raised above the animal. The, mis the interpretation pretends to be good, but we know that it is not, for it is the conflict of the inhabited body. The body by nature desires and is pleased and satisfied by the things that are contrary to the spiritual life. Chocolate cake is good. Torah, not so good, according to the carnal mind. So my interpretation of what to do, how to go about life, 
would be according to the animal carnal you know misinterpretation would be eat chocolate cake then fall asleep wake up and realize the tragedy of my time because I've been asleep now in spirit Esau is still very much present I'm still here so the question arises once more chocolate cake porra I'm still gonna pick chocolate chocolate cake because it's appeasing to my to my taste to my flesh to the senses which teach confusion and deception the carnal man or mind or mind carnal mind the, the animal the serpent you know the the serpent um, self but the lower serpent now but at least I know at least I'm very conscious and at least I'm honest so that is a beginning worth beginning I would say a lot of us can't even do that you know so knowing that if I'm not too sleepy after eating chocolate cake I will study Torah but I would not lie because then I would be worse so now the lust to be content I and I have learned to desire is to be in debt is to owe is to have failed to accept is to have obtained when I desire I am in debt when I desire not I have fulfilled for I have fulfilled the fact that I need nothing for I am content with that which I have this is life fulfilled I am successful because I I've, I've achieved my goal in life nothing the minute I desire I am indebted not only to the life that is required to live in order to bring about that which one desires but then the cost of the thing desired I just gotta have this I just have to get that I just gotta have my way no we don't we've been given a portion and we must accept it and we must not desire outside of that which has been given for we have all things we wake up in the morning we go to sleep at night we have food to eat water to drink Torah to study anything outside of this is desiring from a tree the which has been forbidden that I have received from you know so I think out autarkis 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 that's I think that's like a, the word in Greek for content autos the self and uh, um, I think the next word is like um, autarkis autarkis I forgot the next word but it's um, arkis I think it's arkis which means to ward off to to get away from to get away from the self is to be content to war against the self knowing that the self is the problem so and I had learned to be content Paul you know testified to this you know in prison must we lose our heads beyond death row to realize that we must be content well yes we do and we have instead of I and I corruption we have Jesus Christos as head so continuing on Amalekites it says descendants of Amalek grandson of Esau they are usually called Amalek the base desires of the individual to to those in spiritual understanding it is clear that the veil of valley dweller represents the great realm of mind called the subconscious the Amalekites symbolize the animal forces appetites and passions they are warlike and are destructive in their nature they must be cleansed completely out of consciousness by denial disobedience has many forms the most stubborn is that which absolutely refuses to obey it stands up for its rights it tells us that certain things are good for us that the race has always indulged in them and that such indulgence is necessary such ideas as these are the Amalekites down in the veil 
They have become fixed in consciousness and refuse to abdicate. They are not receptive to the illumination of spirit. They crave self-gratification and are determined to have it. I got to have this. I just got to get my way. That would be that. They must be taken up in prayer and denied place in consciousness if we do not destroy these errors that God commands us to destroy sooner or later they will obtain command to such an extent that they will devour to destroy us obedience to the Lord divine law ensures peace and joy and leads into the paths of, of pleasantness and abundant prosperity the revelation will manifest the key is not to imagine the outcome and just accept what comes forth because of the prosperity will not come in the way that satisfies the adversarial carnal mind it'll come in the way that is proper for us at, at the right measure the right time the right way in the right form you know now having said all of that I am the problem outside of this truth there is no problem at all now we go forth and um, go a little bit more into into um, details concerning what we trying to get to verse 9 chapter 17 book of Exodus and Moses said to Joshua choose us out men and go out to fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Joshua. See, this is, uh, you have to be in the first power of the Trinity. You have to know that that, that there's different levels and um, different things going on at the same time. And, you know, uh, just a written word cannot give life to the fact that, all right, this is talking about different aspects of creation within the same space and time. Um, Joshua could be a type of Yeshua. And he chooses out men. And he is in the valley on earth fighting against that which is veiled by the flesh and must be destroyed. Mean and uh, Meanwhile, tomorrow, and that tomorrow could be today, if you receive his word and mix it with faith, accepting that it is true today as it is yesterday and ever will be, affirming that what he has affirmed is true and exact, true and faithful witness that he is true, thus we are true, for he cannot deny himself, and if I recognize that he is, then I am. I and I is one. Now, Yeshua is fighting on earth, um, leading the chosen men, chosen men, able and capable to fight the good fight of faith, while Moses tomorrow shall stand on the hill, on this chosen government, and he will have the rod of God in his hand. Now in this case, because Moses is not the manifestation of Christ in his kingly character, that's to say the Mashiach ben David, David, that is to say um, Christ acting in the, in, the, in the capacity of the highest um, position in human government. Um, because Moses is not that, then we are seeing a shadow of things to come. But it's exactly what is to be... Um, uh, made manifest and has been made manifest but Elohim the spirit the spirit of creation the Holy Spirit that sustains all things that is more mostly active in all of creation but is the element that we fail to to recognize um, more often times than not always present always working is too great to be expressed in one single person it doesn't matter if it's Yeshua HaMashiach and it doesn't matter if it's Haile Selassie first. In like manner, Moses is receiving um, energy and is being sustained and is being empowered from above. But still, he is the living representation of what is to be. So now, he goes up to the top of the hill 
and Moses has the rod or the branch in his hand. Let's go forward. So Christ and his called ones are sent to earth while his majesty reigns in heaven. But there's war in heaven. So let us continue. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him, I do the will of my father. And fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. So we have a trinity. But even more than that, the trinity is only the visible aspect. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hands that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hands, Amalek prevailed. Now we need to recognize the role and responsibility of Aaron and Hur. Moses would be the center, uh, the chosen, through which the Holy Spirit is revealed in its, you know, in its um, individual personality. Aaron is to whom we can accredit the priesthood. You see, the, the, the birthright has been divided since Adam. Because he decided to separate himself being complete. So he no longer exercised fullness in, um, in, in the right to reign through birth. He gave up to his side or to his body the, the priestly, I would say the priestly role. Which is represented by by Aaron and the Levites, but that was only for for the time necessary for the work that is clean to have been made full. That is to say, what is behind the veil, the kush, the darkness, what is in the heart of, of Yahweh Elohim, the secretness up in the highlands of Ethiopia, what is going on in private. In the intimacy of his goodwill. You know. So. So now. Uh, most. So while that's taking place. The Levites are allowed. You know. The, to be entitled with. Um, with the priestly. Um, uh, rights. Until. The promise reached. To whom it is. You know. Um, given. But it is not given until it is received. So whoever received the promise will have that same promise um, removed from them because everything is split and flipped. We'll explain that as we go forward. So now, Aaron is represent the representation of half of the of the um, birthright, which is the priestly um, right, and then Hur is of the tribe of Judah, which which hath received the right of rulership as far as kingship. Now these two are up in the mount with um with Moses, but there's another element that is hidden. If Moses is the soul, the spirit is from above, then who is the body? The body is Ethiopia, is the woman. Now, going forward it says, But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone, a abin. Like um Wyndham um, uh <clears throat> Wyndham Yasun has pointed out Ab and Abin, the the father and the son. So a stone, a cornerstone, a foundation, a basis, a beginning was taken and put under him to affirm his his standing. Now Torah is our standing. Because I and I do not dwell on earth. I and I is in heaven. But if you're in heaven, that means that you're floating up in, in the sky somewhere. That cannot be. So we need earth to sustain us and support, you know, and, um, with equal and opposite force. So that it is true. Not breaking um, the boundary or the well-defined line of fantasy and reality. So thus Torah becomes my earth on which I stand. And represent 
the heavenly will. You see Torah, people think that it's very carnal, very fleshy, very like um, just to just to like low level. That's actually not the case. Torah is so high of a level that we think of it as such because our pride does not allow us to accept the fact that we are so far from it that we cannot even um, uh, express life through it. So Torah is a heavenly foundation on which we are set. Continuing, it says, And he sat down, so Moses sits as if on a throne established, and Aaron the priest, and Hur, Judah, the kings, stayed up his hands, so helping one another. The one on one side, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Steady. Emuna. Faith. Were made sure. But what is the connection for the assurity? It is Ethiopia, which is in the heart of Moses, which is the body of Moses. And there's actually more to say concerning that, but we won't um, uh, receive that until a little bit further. So now, let's see. Um, going forward. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said to Moses, write this for a memorial and a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. I'm not sure if I should bring forth some other evidence Jah will has to be received. Moses married an Ethiopian. Since that time on, and since before Ethiopia was chosen, one's just got to accept that. Ethiopia is according to the flesh. Ayanias Rastafari doesn't matter black or white. We are according to the promise. We were disinherited a long time ago. But we're not abandoned. We're not forsaken completely. According to the flesh, His Majesty came. According to the flesh, Ethiopians, faithful, where Israel. Moses, through Moses, this was reaffirmed as it always has been, and in his bosom is his children with Zipporah, which he handed over to the excellency Jethro. Now, Jethro is the, the, the priest of Midian. Why is there a distinguished um, element to Zipporah and being an Ethiopian and Jethro being a Midianite? Because there's war even in Midian, like there is war in Ethiopia. So, um, who is it? In the plains of Moab, the king of Edom, if I'm not mistaken, uh, struck or conquered uh, the Midianites. And since that time, Midianites are not Midianites. But there is a remnant. Moses saved part of that remnant. Because even they were a remnant. So, when Moses um, defends Zipporah and, uh, you know, takes care of the flock of Jethro, he actually defended them and freed them from the downpressor, which were downpressing um, the Midianites. Now, later on, I think Exodus, like chapter 2, it says something like, and, and, you know, through the passing of time, Israel cried to the Lord and he did hear us. In the Hebrew, it says it's the age 1992, and I remember because of 1991, you know, and the happenings in, um, in, in Ethiopia, when they established a corrupt form of government to rule Ethiopia, or whatever, communism, democracy, republic, it's not the, the, the true and faithful um, form of government, so it doesn't matter. It was, a, it was a victory for the New World Order, so-called, very old and very not orderly, just confusion. Anyways, so now, um, Haim, like Ham, but Haim, they too, like were the Ethiopians, oppressed, and like through Moses, the Ethiopians were saved. Well, later on, we too began to complain, and we too would have received, you know, some level of salvation through Moses. Now, continuing, let's see, 
Uh, so Moses marries a refined Midianite, which is an Ethiopian, which is a seventh or a severed from the flesh and perfected um, uh, Zipporah, a queen of seven, seven sisters, no male inheritance. Ones would assume that Hobab and, and all these other names, which are code to represent the children or the lineage of Moses, which he, through a bill of divorce, handed to Jethro, having fulfilled his role and responsibility. Not that there was a, you know, like a dramatic breakup or whatever. It's the fact that job will is to be fulfilled and all other things must we then be circum circumcised from the flesh, profited nothing. The spirit make it all things. And so, you know, Moses did his job, gave to Jethro male lineage through Zipporah, and thus uh, Ethiopia continues, you know, like um, as as the will of the Most High has declared it to be since the beginning, to the point where that woman would travail and bring forth Lich Teferi, would bring forth a man child. So that woman is in the bosom as of Moses, also of Yahweh Elohim, and not the woman being a type of man, but that's the misinterpretation of Adam, but rather Eve, mother of all living, Ethiopia. But Ethiopia, split and flip, no longer is Ethiopia. I and I is Ethiopia. So, you know, keep that in mind. Now, going forward, Zipporah, where were we? Uh, Zipporah, so, so really, Moses is the connection, but it's not Moses. It's the thing not seen, now revealed. It's his woman. Because a man, Christ, gave it all up for his church, for his body. And so represented in the middle, the connector, to, to make it one rod, the priesthood and the kingship, is through Ethiopia. That's the one rod, which is, you know, um, the priest and the kings. Now, in this case, it would be uh, let's see, it would be Ephraim and Judah to connect that. Judah, we have to accept that is Ethiopia. Now, some of us in, in, the, in the Americas might be able to travel Judah, but, you know, symbolically, Judah is in Ethiopia. We would be Ephraim as a collective sense, scattered, you know, in the north country. So Ephraim, you know, there's only two witnesses that, that um, participated in, that were 20 years of age and older in the original Exodus. And these same two witnesses are the only two that came into the, the land of promise because of the spirit that was within them, which was different to contrary to all the other um, Israelites, which died in the wilderness. Those two um, witnesses are representations of these rods that must be united. We have, for one part, we have um, Caleb. Caleb is the son of Jephunneh, which is a Kenizzite, which is an Ethiopian. Kenizzite is, is um, well, Ken the Kenizzites were, were given for possession to Abram. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more to it. But Kenizzites, in other words, it's, it's related to the Ethiopians in particular because the Ethiopians... Or the Kenites, which I dare say are relatives of Moses, but are not accredited to Moses. But in the book of Chronicles, sec, uh, First Chronicles, it is mentioned that the lineage of Moses are accounted for Levites. And they're actually over the, the treasures and the Gaza. They're over Gaza. I mean, a whole, much, a whole bunch to say concerning that. But Caleb, son of Jephunneh, Jephunneh the, um, the Kenizzite. Of the tribe of Judah represented as prince over the tribe of Judah so we have a mixed Ethiopian Israelite over the house of Judah as one rod the kingship we have o o Oseas or uh, later named uh, by Moses Joshua the son of Nun of the tribe of Ephraim Ephraim is not even the son of Jacob but he is according to the promise and thus, um, originally, Ephraim is the second-born son of Joseph. Joseph, having married uh, uh, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, Asenath, bears 
two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. So the rod of Ephraim, which is to be, uh, is to be through whom the promise of Jacob uh, ruling over, over many peoples is fulfilled, is through Ephraim. And Ephraim is also a mixed uh, multitude in the sense that Ephraim is Egyptian by by their mother Asenath and is Israelite through through um Joseph. So we have these two rods that are both both mixed with Ham and Shem. And these two rods must be united and they are in Ethiopia. But this is all code, this is all secret that ones must um you know seek after the heart of him whom it is it is um in our best interest to seek after and he will reveal for he can he cannot deny himself and if you're in his heart then then he knows his himself now let's see where was i going with this uh, let's see and moses built an offer he an altar he edified he built he constructed an altar a sacrifice he let go of all the bs of all the animals he um he gave up the self and called the name of it Yehovah Nessi, the banner, the pole, the flag of Yahweh. For he said, Because the Lord hath sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Now this is where we need to we need to pay closer attention. The English does not reveal the fullness of what it actually says. This is what it says in um in Spanish, it says, um, eh, Y Moisés edificó un altar, y llamó su nombre Jehová Nesí, y dijo, Por cuanto la mano sobre el trono de Jehová, Jehová tendrá guerra con Amalek de generación en generación. El trono de Jehová. Even this is wrong, because in the Hebrew it would say ya, and then it says um, case, um, Yahweh. But um, we'll go into that a little bit. Uh, further on, let's see. This is and the Amharic um, two or three witnesses affirms truth. That this is what the Amharic would say concerning that. It say, let's see, let's say, Musaim Meshuyashra Semunam Yahweh Nesi Blot Nagre No Blot Rau Ersume Le Jun Be Exaver Zufan Lies Le Chane Ye Exaver Self Be Amalek Lai Le Lich now, let's see, how much time do we have? This thing turns off like at the hour mark. Let's see, uh... Ersum by his hand, by the hand of in Ixiabher, the sustainer Zufan, the throne, upon, is is set upon, rely, slay, because or concerning, regarding, uh, chane, 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 because of, um, let's see, because of the burden, because of this burden, because of this um this load. Chane Yeixabher self has has he the or in the sustainer has um and I don't know I'm hard so I'm just trying to go with what the little I can I can receive order of battle demonstration in so in the hand of the sustainer the throne is set upon because of the burden of the sustainer in the order of battle in the demonstration in war upon Amalek or with Amalek from generation to generation has been agreed upon Yehun Ale. This thing's gonna stop, so shalom.